tomorrow, right? Nine o'clock tomorrow. Nine o'clock tomorrow. Yeah. Yes, Regular City Council meeting of the Oak Park City Council is called to order. Please stand for the pledge to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, there will not be a halftime show by the council members, just saying. <laughs> roll call. Will the city clerk please call the roll? Mayor McClellan. Here. Mayor Pro Tem Burns. Here. Council Member Rabbit. Council Member White. Here. Council Member Edwards. Here. We have a quorum. Thank you. Uh, I need a motion to approve the agenda. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Uh, item five, the consent agenda. These are routine items presented without discussion. Um, I would like item G removed uh, just to, to get an update on the safe routes to school. So the items uh, under consideration are A, regular city council meeting minutes of January 21st. 2020. Parks and Rec Commission meeting minutes of December 18th, 2019. Retirement Board minutes of October 28th and November 5th. Request to advertise for bids for the 2020 Citywide Janitorial Services Contract M711. E, request to advertise for bids for the 2020 Landscape Maintenance Contract M709. F, request to advertise for bids for the 2020 Lawn Maintenance Contract, M710. Uh, we are skipping G, H, payment application number four, final for the 2018-19 Miscellaneous Concrete Repair Project, M682, to Mattioli Cement Company Limited for the amount of $5,000. I, payment application number one, for the 2019 sewer and catch basin cleaning and TV inspection project, M700 to Deutsch Environmental Services of Warren, Michigan, in the amount of $59,480.10. And finally, licenses, new and renewals is submitted for February 3rd. Is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? So moved. Second. Um, um, moved by Mayor Pro Tem, seconded by uh, Council Member Weiss, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Please take a look at the request, item G, request for payment of invoices from OHM advisors for bridge enhancements and safe routes to schools, preliminary engineering for the total amount of $17,411.75. Uh, is there a motion to approve this payment? So moved. Second. Moved, um, moved by Congress Council Member Weiss. She's not in Congress yet, but you never know. Uh, seconded by Mayor Pro Tem. So um, my question on this is just an update on the bridge enhancements and the safe routes to school, not um, whether we pay it or not. Madam Mayor, if I could. Yes, please. Um, I'm gonna, yeah, Kevin, I'm going to have you come on up for the bridge enhancements. Um, with regards to safe routes to school, um, we have some very good news, news um, that I wanted to share this evening. Um, unfortunately, Director Rob Baird couldn't be here from, for a family emergency, so I hope to have an announcement coming up um, that we'll be able to share with the public at the next meeting. So good news is coming. Good news is definitely coming, yes. And that's on the bridge or the safe, safe routes, routes to school? To school? So I would just ask that we withhold, as far as the engineering portion of this, Kevin can speak to this as well a little bit, yeah. but as far as the overall yes. project, we do have some good news coming up. Wonderful. So. Um, Hello. Hello. Um, for the engineering portion of the Safe Rocks to School, the project has been designed. There's been a, several modifications. 
based on what um, MDOT um, and their consultant have required. And we've gone back and forth on a lot of the signals and signal timing and how we do that. Um, so as uh, City Manager Tongate mentioned, um, Rob Barrett, Director Barrett, would be uh, prepared to uh, give a presentation, which he was going to give tonight, but he did, was pulled away. So um, the engineering portion is just for the design work that we've been doing um, in coordination and conjunction with MDOT. Super. As for the bridge project, yeah. um, the bridge project, obviously, um, a lot of it is up. The lights are now on. Um, looks fantastic in a lot of those ways. There are some adjustments in the lighting that I want to see. Um, some of the edges of the arches aren't lit up as well as I, I wanted. Um, they have told me that they plan on painting the leaves next week as their preliminary schedule. So the leaves will get, um, and by paint, painting, they are going to get gold ex outlines and accents um, on the leaves, on both the smaller leaves on the ends and the, the large leaf in the middle, which will show up much better as you're driving down the street because right now it kind of blends in a little bit too much. So that is supposed to be done next week. And then they also have to do some work with the fenules on top of the posts and um, also they're going to fix the fencing so that it doesn't go all the way down to the sidewalk. They're going to raise it up some so we don't get debris and things caught in that fence along the, the sidewalk. Raised. Wonderful. Um, I noticed that the beginning of the Oak Park and the end of the Oak Park aren't lit up at night. You know what I mean? Y yes, they need some adjustments on the lighting. Yes, that's right. I, um, they're going to, I asked them to adjust the lighting so it gets the whole arch. The whole? Correct. Got it. We drove by and inspected. Yes, and I appreciate that because, you know, if you don't say anything, maybe we won't know. But that is one thing that we did catch, we did point out, and I did um, talk to them today about that. Right. Everybody, I would say 97% of the people who comment to me love it. They love the bridge. People who don't even live in Oak Park have written me to tell me how much they love driving under the sign on their way to work. And so. we've had other municipalities contact us too because I think they're a little jealous. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, mean, I was going to say to Oak date. Oak Park's the leader as always. We, all we, right. But in all seriousness, to date, we've had two serious inquiries from t two other city officials on, on having their own So since we put ours up. so. Oak Park leads. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. Any Oh, any questions about the engineering for the bridge or the safe roads? I did have a quick question about the bridge. Yes. I know you mentioned that on the inside, the sidewalk side, that you're going to be raising it up a little bit. I have had a few people reach out, and I believe that the there is not any plan currently to do anything with the interior of it, um, but I might be mistaken. Is there any plan to put any kind of signage on the inside, foolage facing side of the sign? No, there is not. Okay. I think most simply because you wouldn't really be able to see it or it wouldn't have the impact from the inside because you're never really coming at it directly. Sure. So no, there was no intention to put anything other than that. The way that it, the major appearance of it right now is, is pretty much how it's going to look. Okay. Yeah, it Thank wasn't you. in the plane. Got it. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions about the bridge or? No. Um, all those in favor of um, uh, okaying the payment of invoices? Aye. Um, aye. Uh, do we, ha we have a, oh, signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you so much for clarifying. We do have an elected official, um, Oakland County Commissioner Helene Zack. Good evening, everybody. It's nice to be here and see everyone. I um, want to let you know about some things going on in Oakland County. First of all, we have a wonderful county health department, and they have posted information about the coronavirus um, at www.oakgov.com slash health. And so far, we are not in danger unless you know, you know people that are traveling to China and in, in the infection, but they are watching things very closely. And for up-to-date news, you can go to the Oakland County website. Census, I know that the city's talking about it, the state, the county, and so forth. Um, it's very important that people get counted. And I want to repeat that every person that doesn't get counted we lose $1,800 of federal or state funding coming our way for community resources. So there are tremendous amount of initiatives, county being included in it, 
And I do want to uh, remind people that we still need census workers. There's a lot of jobs out there, and they're paying $19 an hour, which is really a great rate for this temporary job. If you're interested in applying, you can visit mytalent.org or census.gov and apply. And I, I was told last week that we've only um, hired 50% of the staff that we need in Oakland County. So please, if you're interested. So we have two big celebrations this year. One is a year, is 100 years of women voting, as well as this is the bicentennial of Oakland of Oakland County government. 200 years ago we were founded. So there's a bunch of different celebrations happening. And to celebrate the women's um, voting, there is going to be a speaker next week, Michelle Duster, two speaking events. And she's the great granddaughter of Ida B. Wells, who is a prominent African American journalist abolitionist and feminist during the, 19th, the late 19th and 20th centuries. She's going to be speaking at events sponsored by the Board of Commissioners um, Monday, February 10th at Oakland Center at Oakland University campus at 630. Closer to home on Tuesday, she's going to be at the Royal Oak Oakland Community College um, Auditorium at 10.30 a.m. on February 11th. I'm told that what she's What was the February 10th time again? February 10th. At OU. At OU is at 6.30 p.m. at the Oakland Center on the campus. Mm -hmm. And then Tuesday morning, February 11th, 10.30 at the auditorium at Royal Oak OCC. Um, these are free, you know, please come and go. We are going to um, have another contest, a PSA and poetry contest. This is being sponsored by the board and Oakland schools have partnered to create new student contests in honor of the 100th anniversary of women's suffrage in 2020. Um, there will be more than $2,000 in cash prizes. And what we're asking students to do is to do get out the vote um, artwork. And if you're interested, you can go to the Board of Commissioners, www.gov.com, for more information on this. Um, we have a bunch of different bicentennial events that are coming. One thing that I'm really excited about is that we are purchasing 20,000 oak trees that are going to be distributed around the county. And I know some are coming here. And, you know, free trees, you know, to the communities. And I think it's really exciting to be planting more trees throughout our county to commemorate 200 years. So I also finally want to remind residents that if you are low income, disabled, and need your tax refund to pay your taxes by April 15th, you can seek an eligibility waiver to delay paying your taxes till April 30th, um, waiting for your refund check. And to do that, you need to contact our local city, the tax collector here by February 15th, and ask for, you know, let them know that you need to do that and they will, you know, certify that it's okay to do that. Uh, I think it's a wonderful service that we do this every year. So, any questions? Yes. yes. Um, I just had a couple comments. Thank you for all of that. I just want to, you mentioned the starting pay for um, census workers, and I believe in Oakland County it's actually higher. I think it's 22 or $23 an hour in Oakland well, County. Well, I hope you're right. I, I'm just what? going from my talking census. points that's on my face. Yeah. Um, if it's, that high. That's even better. Yeah. So in Oakland, they're very. They want people in Oakland County. So please apply if you're. Would you looking. repeat that? Job it's uh, the Oakland County Census work in Oakland County. I believe starts at twenty-two or twenty-three dollars an hour, in Oakland County specifically. And who do better. they contact for that job? Um, 
She said I, you can go to mytalent.org or census.gov. Would that be for this $23 an hour one? It's the same one. It's, same one? it's all, all past lead to the same place. Yes. Oh, okay. Thank you for sharing that. I'm just going after the talking notes that were provided. And I also want to say, because you mentioned the $1,800 that you get, that from filling it out, you, you figure you get $1,800 back to your local community. But if you think about that, it's for 10 years. So you multiply that for every year by 10, that's $18,000 for every person who's counted on the census. And so it's very, very, very important if you multiply that by the number of people who don't fill it out regularly, that's a lot of money, a lot of resources that our local communities are not getting, um, services that we're not getting access to. So it's critically important. There's only a few questions on there. It only takes about 10 minutes to fill it out. It's really important that everybody fills it out and that you count everyone in your household. And I, we always need to be discussing that people shouldn't fear sharing personal information. Nothing is going to be used against you. I know that there are people that may not be registered um, from an immigration standpoint, but there's no harm or fear in filling out these forms. I just want to add one or two more things about census 2020. It's already February, but if you know of anybody who um, is a snowbird, lives, goes out of state for the winter months, please urge them to use their Michigan address when filling out the census, because again, we stand to lose that money if people use their Florida or Arizona address for the census. Secondly, there are people who are gonna try and scam you. Um, you should not be getting phone calls from census workers. So know that if somebody calls you, it's, it's likely a scam. Um, and then also, just to tell you, it's Oak Park's 75th birthday this year. Wow. Yes. That's a wonderful so we have a big celebration. One. So thank you. Anyway, thank you. Okay. Um, we have uh, no public hearings, communications, special licenses, or accounting reports, which brings us down to item 12 on the agenda, bids. This is a request to award the bid for the 2020 sewer lining project M703 to Inland Waters Pollution Control Incorporated of Detroit, Michigan, uh, for the amount of $232,083. Is there a motion to award this bid? So moved. That's by um, Council Member Weiss. Is there a second? Second. Mayor Pro Tem. Um, uh, can we have an explanation of how this was picked and have they worked for us before and all those kinds of questions? Good evening. Um, yeah, so if you recall, we requested to rebid this project um, back in January because the bids came in higher than we had expected. Um, and there was only one bidder. Two other bidders had turned their bids in late, which we do not accept. So we wanted to rebid it to get a more competitive bid and uh, we felt that it was higher than um, what we, well, it was higher than we had estimated it to be what our engineer's estimate was. So we did rebid it. Our original bid, if you do recall, um, was $313,390. So this bid is about is more than eighty thousand dollars less at two hundred thirty-two thousand um, zero eighty-three, but it is for sewer lining. Um, so lining sewers um, that we find have some deficiencies in them, and um, we have worked with Inland Waters before, and we also checked their references just to be sure because we haven't worked with them a, a, a ton. So references came back positive. Our experience before with them was positive. So we are recommending to award the bid. Are there questions on this bid? Yes, Mayor Pro Tem I have a question. Um, we have $500,000 in the budget for this work, correct? Correct. I'm just curious, so was the reason why they were awarded was because they are the lowest bidder? Because each one of these bids, <clears throat> each one of the bidders, no matter which one we had selected, would have been under the $500,000 that was budgeted in it. And before the 313, 390, those, that was the only one we received in the past. Correct. So we rebid it, and they rebid it. They bid on it again. So my question is, other than Inland Waters being the lowest bidder, why didn't we select Institute Form Technologies or Landslow Trenchless? Because they are both significantly under the budgeted amount. 
we always want to take the lowest qualified bid. And in this case, Inland Waters is a very qualified vendor. They do a lot of this work, and we have no reason not to save money and to hire them. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Thank you. We're ready, um, ready for a vote. <coughs> Mayor Pro Yes. 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 Motion Thank carried. You. Thank you. There are no ordinances. Um, our city attorney is not here. Um, city manager Eric Tungay. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Members of Council, I'd like to call up our finance director, Sandra Crawford, to go over 15A through E, please. It's your big night. <laughs> Good evening, Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem and Council. Okay, before you, um, item 15A is the second quarter investment report for the fiscal year of 1920. And this report includes a description of the, uh, I'm sorry, the types of uh, market and book values and also the cash and investments that are held by as of December 31st of 2019. The second quarter investment reports show the citywide cash and investments of 29621437 which includes cash in the operating account of 3652955 which excludes outstanding checks and other adjustments. The money market of $316,132 and also commercial paper totaling $4,597,292 and in long-term investments of $6,525,675. The city um, has maximized the investments on return of the short-term cash by utilizing the Oakland County investment pool and also um, utilizing the uh, checking and daily depositories with the uh, Huntington Bank. Our, S our investment income for the months of October through December 2019 totaled $89,506. The overall investment returns for this quarter fell for the second straight quarter and have fallen significantly from the annual returns of approximately 2.2% from July 1st of 2019 to 1.6% on December 31st, 2019. And economists are predicting additional decreases coming in the coming months. As a result, what the city is doing, we are investing short term and locking up longer term investments if the individual interest rates are favorable. The overall return for the second quarter saw a significant reduction compared with the last quarter due to long term unrealized gains helping to little offset the smaller short term realized gains. And that is that report for the investment report for the second quarter. Any questions or comments? Just have to receive and file, yes. Uh, we need a motion to receive and file the quarterly investment report for the period ending 12-31-19. So moved. Moved by Con Council Member Weiss. Second. Seconded by Mayor Pro Tem. Uh, all those in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Passed unanimously. Thank you. Item 15B, which is the second quarter for the budget to actual report of the general fund. And basically this report is giving the fiscal uh, year-to-date revenue and expenditures, which should represent approximately 50% of the annual budget. And for the general fund, the revenues, the total revenues for the second quarter total approximately 16.5 million, which represents about 77% of the annual budget with the overall uh, notes of property tax revenue. Most of our revenue is always um, collected by the due date, so 95% of that, of what has been billed, has been collected as of uh, 7, September 3rd. And so um, we will get the remainder from Oakland County for um, in May 2020 for any of the uh, property taxes that have not been paid. Our revenue, state, sh state sharing revenue, um, we've received the two of our um, bi-monthly bi uh, bi -monthly payments and um, we will receive the remaining four payments in February, April, and June, and August, um, which we credit back to this fiscal year. Fines and forfeitures, the revenue um, received from the district court uh, represents about 44%, um, but it's sli running slightly uh, a little bit behind from prior year and budget, but um, 
the revenue will be received and used to offset any of the portion of the court's operating costs. The expenditures total approximately 10.4 million, uh, which represents about 48% of the annual budget. Um, and then the noted departments um, are slightly over, but for every department that is noted that is slightly over, um, they are still overall, the net budget is on track uh, with the current line uh, annual projections. And so um, those noted departments are mayor and council department, um, which was due to the community promotion contributions, which are at 100% of the budget. Prosecuting attorney, um, because of their um, invoices, uh, they're at eight months as opposed to six months of the budget. Um, the engineering department, uh, with uh, allocations that um, are charged out to other departments, but again, they will be brought in line uh, by the end of the budget year. Uh, public safety, which is slightly over, which is um, in the maintenance um, and repairs, and uh, uh, some of their uh, health care is running slightly ahead of the uh, projected projections for the budget. Public works and um, the special events for recreation, um, but again, uh, they will line in with the uh, annual projections by the fiscal year end. So overall, the general fund operations are in line with the annual budget and the projected uh, fund balance remains at the targeted percentage of 18.3% of the annual expenditures. Any other questions? Okay. Um, uh, is there a motion to file and receive the quarterly financial report? So moved. Second. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Passed unanimously. Thank you so much for your work. You're welcome. Item 15C is me as well. 15C. Um, <laughs> this is the um, second quarter uh, budget amendment and um, based on the uh, general fund and it's summarized as follows. Um, at the beginning of the audit um, of the fiscal year, I'm sorry, the audited uh, version of our fund balance was 4369283 and then we've had a couple of amendments since then. Um, and so the total amendments, which were uh, in the first quarter, which were basically a lot of the rollover of the fiscal year of 1819 dollars that were not expensed, um, but the projects will continue in 1920 fiscal year, uh, was totaling 350,381. Um, but as a result of the fund balance, the change in fund balance for this second quarter uh, amendments that's few things between the uh, revenues and expenditures are coming uh, in line and so we're actually going to um, be to the good of uh, $10,381. Uh, so if we stay on that track, we're projecting that the fund balance to be uh, approximately $4,029,283. Um, and then uh, below are some of the uh, revenues that require uh, that aided in that uh, addition of the fund balance, which are building permits revenue is greater than budgeted, and then we had an increase in grant revenue for the pocket parks. Um, but overall, this uh, amendment allows for a decrease in the amount of the fund balance that was projected to be used, and it keeps the general fund with a slight increase of the projected fund balance when we started out in the budget year, fiscal year of 19. Uh, 20, we thought it was going to be approximately three million eight ninety four eight twenty one when we adopted the budget in last May. And um, other than that, uh, the proposed budget amendment has an impact on the fund, uh, the fund balance of the general fund, while keeping the estimated fund balance at approximately eighteen point three percent of our annual <coughs> expenditures. And uh, the amendments uh, to all other funds keeps uh, the fund balance of the targeted ranges and are done in compliance with the state of Michigan requirements and guidelines. Okay. Are there any so questions? this is um, uh, to authorize the budget amendment number 2020-2? Yes, for the second quarter. Okay, is there a motion to um, approve this resolution? So moved. Second. Okay, Mayor Pro Tem um, made the motion, second by Council Member Weiss. Discussion or questions? Madam Mayor. Yes. Um, this will be a roll call. We need a roll, roll call. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any discussion? Yes. What's commercial paper? Commercial paper is where we buy uh, 
uh, investments from businesses or corporations and things like that, and they have a grading. Um, and so based on Public Act 20 uh, for State of Michigan, um, we can buy a, uh, grades A1, P2, A1, P1, and A2, P2, and those are the types of grades of uh, the commercial paper, which is in the instruments that we can buy from different companies and things like that for that, for them to help with their business to run, you know, to buy, you know, cash and to give them cash to do their business and then they re uh, pay us back. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? No. Roll call, please. Council Member Edwards. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mayor McCall. Yes. Council Member White. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Yes. Motion carried. Um, Next is item 15D. Item D. <laughs> this here is um, asking for approval of the Board of Review compensation and additional meeting dates. Um, based on our charter, we, um, it states that the Board of Review shall meet the second and fourth Monday in March for the purpose of hearing tax assessment appeals and the assessing, assessing department is requesting to schedule one additional date with the option to add additional dates if so uh, needed uh, for um, to hear um, residents and um, businesses uh, tax appeals. Uh, we are also asking um, the Board of Review compensation uh, to be increased. Uh, we before we would pay $40 for a half day session, $80 for a full day session. Um, we've been doing that for, oh, as long as I've been here, at least 20 years. Um, and we have, have discovered that with other surrounding communities, um, they're paying anywhere from 40 to $135 um, for half days and full day sessions. And so we are asking um, if we can increase the Board of Review compensation from $40 to $60 for a half a day service and from $80 to $120 for a full day service. And then also asking that um, the Board of Review meetings for Monday, March 9th, 2020 be held from 9 a.m. to 1 and 3 to 7. And on Monday, March 23rd from 9 a.m. to 12 and from 1 to 4. And the additional <laughs> day of Wednesday from March 11th, 2020 uh, from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Okay. Uh, we need a motion to approve the increase in the rate of compensation for the Board of Review so uh, moved. from uh, 60 from 40, 40, from 40 to 60 from, yeah, from 40, 40 to 60 for a half day and, and from 80, 80 to 120 for a full day. Mm -hmm. So moved. Moved by Mayor Pro Tem. We need a second. I think we're, aren't we also approving the meeting to? Um, uh, do we have, can we do them together? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, okay. And also the 2020 Board of Review meetings at City Hall um, on Monday, March 9th from 9 to 1 and 3 to 7, Wednesday, March 11th from 6 to 8 p.m., Monday, March 23rd from 9 to 12 um, p.m., and from 1 to 4 p.m. Second. Second. Uh, discussion? So when was the last time that there was a raise for Board of Review members? Wow, I'd have to go back, but I can tell you not, it had to be prior to, I've been here since about 95, so it had to be prior to that. Um, we've been paying 40 and 80 for, like I said, over 20 years. So you did um, a study of what the other cities are Offering yes. and you came in somewhere in the middle? Yes, I did. Um, they had ranged anywhere from $50 a session to $125, $135 a session. Um, some people pay uh, a flat fee. Uh, whether you do a half a day, they give you $135. Um, and some uh, do uh, like $30 an hour, plus include lunch. We don't include lunch. Mm -hmm. um, so, yes. Do they hear a lot of cases? Like on average, how many cases come before the board? I think it just probably depends because it's appealing your tax, it's, it's a tax appeal. Um, I would think that it would probably determine 
how much your assessment got raised. <laughs> or, right, but know, I mean, how many, how many cases do they hear? Can I? Yes, please. I, it's, it's not a tremendous amount. It just, in, if I could just, Sandra and I had discussed the, um, the in possible increases, and it is somewhere middle of the pack based on the comparative analysis that her staff conducted. Um, middle, lower of the pack, I would even say. But the total net effect to the budget that this would have, we think, is somewhere between nine and eighteen hundred dollars. And that's if everybody, because we have six members, and if, if that's if all six members participate, we usually don't have all six members participate. Again, these are during the day, so you're asking if you're working to take off work to come and do that, and usually that's not the case. It's more for if someone is probably retired would be um, probably one of the best candidates that would take advantage of this. But um, I can just tell you that um, we usually have uh, at least three members in a session. Um, I can tell you that last year uh, for the Board of Review, um, based on those rates, we spent about $520. Uh, with the cases that we heard and for that time and if I had to use that as the model and just put in the new f uh, Factors with that. I would say we would come out about 780 for the board of review sessions in March And so you're talking about a difference of about two hundred and sixty dollars mm -hmm. for the increase and she's asking about the number of cases. cases the number of cases yeah. which I, I'm pretty sure is kind of hard to give as a I variable to, number It is right. I can research it in bring it back to you because I know we do once we do have the board of review we bring the minutes before you that tell you we always um, see the, the results uh, the individuals that came or the taxpayers that came before you but I don't know off the top of my head how many cases um, per se that they hear every year okay. thank you you're welcome are we ready to vote yes um, roll call please Mayor McClellan. yes Councilmember White. yes mayor pro tem burns yes Councilmember Edgar. Yes. Motion carried. Okay, I'm sorry. Our uh, item 15E, mm -hmm. which is a request for um, the Board of Review Poverty Exemption Policy. And um, the recommended action is to adapt the attached City of Oak Park 2020 Poverty Exemption uh, Policy. And um, this policy represents the necessary changes to bring us in accordance with the act and this is also um, poverty exemptions are also he uh, heard at the uh, March Board of Review for um, certain individuals that meet the um, guidelines that are established by the um, US Department and um, the um, Household income out, uh, guidelines um, are established, um, I believe it's by the uh, Department of HUD and um, the policy. And every year when we get the update, we update our policy and ask that the board um, approve the updates according to. Um, and the update the comes from the State Tax Commission? Yes. <laughs> so we are passing on this. In the guidelines, yes, yeah. so that when a person wants to apply for that with the application, we give them the uh, income limit guidelines and um, go through um, the procedure so. of them showing the need to have their uh, assessments reduced based on that. Can we get our motion first and then we'll get to it? Sure. Yep. Uh, is there a motion to adopt the attached City of Oak Park 2020 poverty exemption, exemption policy? So moved. So moved by uh, Mayor Pro Tem. There a second. 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 Council Member Weiss. Um, City Manager Tungi, would you speak to this, please? Director Crawford, I just wanted to um, clarify this. So would you say it's fair to say that this is really just adjusting for the state-determined rate of inflation? I mean, 1.019 is basically their version of the rate yes. of inflation, which is not actually the rate of inflation, but it's the state's determined rate of inflation? Yes. If that makes any sense. Mm -hmm. It's not market rate of inflation. No. I have a question. question. Um, on the attached document from the State Tax Commission on the first page, and I might just be reading this wrong, there's a chart that lists the size of the family unit and the poverty guidelines. Mm -hmm. um, and then on the next page, there's a similar chart, but the numbers are different. Which one's 2019? 
So this, these are the new, the one on the second page are the new guidelines and the one on the previous page are the old guidelines, is that correct? No, no those are the ones that um, we're on here, it says that um, it's not too, it cannot exceed the 18,735 for that um, household. And that's for the 2020 assessments and this um, is for the We, we get to do one, one and a half times the federal poverty um, threshold. Got it. So the first chart is the poverty threshold, and the second yes. chart is, is what, the one point five. Is right. what we're it's, actually going to be yes, instituting. Yes, one point five times you. the federal poverty threshold that we are asking. Further questions? Nope, ready to vote. Um, does this need a roll call? No. All those in favor of adopting the City of Oak Park 2020 poverty exemption policy signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Thank you ever so much for your work and thank you presentation uh, Ma we're now to yeah. I'm sorry cool. um, madam mayor members of council that completes the city manager report for this evening thank you thank you city manager Tungate um, we are now at call to the audience uh, we have little cards so uh, if you fill it out before you you know as you come up uh, we'll spell your name right in a minute come on up to this um, Mike, so um, purpose of that is so the people at home can hear what the issue is. And is the little green light on? Press that little button on the mic. Done? Done. Discussion items also. Sorry. Do you need my discussion items also? No, oh. just your name and address. And if you give it to the clerk, he'll can get you right. Thanks for coming. Uh, what is your name, and how can we help you? My name is Benjamin Brown. Uh, I've been an Oak Park resident since 1986. Yes. Uh, my wife and I both. Newcomer, huh? Yes. <laughs> I just have I have just a few concerns about the community. Uh, first one regarding dogs. Mm -hmm. uh, is there a registration process here in Oak Park for dog owners to be licensed? Okay. Yes, sir. My issue with dog poop. Uh, lot, some some owners are real good with the dogs, and there's some who don't clean up behind the dogs. I don't want to walk out my grass and step in some poop. I'm cutting grass or walking the yard, right. and also they're using the uh, the median on North Northfield Boulevard also as their dog park. Also, uh, I've even found poop on the sidewalk sometimes. Mm. So it's just disgusting to me. I mean, I, I love animals, but I don't want to step in your dog poop. Yeah, no kidding. Oh. Thank you, thank you. And my second issue is it seems like the trash and litter problem is getting worse in Oak Park also. Uh, especially in summertime, you find kids riding down the street in the cars, they'll throw out trash in the streets, McDonald's bags, something like that. Or you go to the uh, strip malls and there's trash all. I don't know what's going on with that. Is there an anti littering law here in Oak Park? Yes. It needs to be mm -hmm. enforced. Okay. Yes, there. Yep, there is. And I think the assistant city manager will tell you how often. They go around and pick up the trash. You need to give some tickets. They, if if caught <laughs> yeah. while doing yeah. it, okay. yes, they get tickets. I, I love my city. I don't want it looking like that. Amen. Please. 
Can I, um, can I, sir, can I just say thank you for your comments, number one, but number two, I share your pain on both issues. We, we pick up trash on a regular basis and we could pick up trash all day, every day, and there would still be more trash. And it's not just individuals, as much as that is an actual problem. It's commercial trash too, falling out of dumpsters yeah, from commercial businesses and things, and we can't keep up quite honestly. Um, but we're doing everything we can to stop it, of course. And yes, it's illegal to litter. Okay. And one more item. In the summertime, you cut your grass. I see a lot of folks blow their lawn clippings to the street and leave it. Doesn't it cost us money to clean the drains out every year? Mm -hmm. So I think that's something that should be enforced also. When I cut my grass, I clean up everything out of the street. I think you can report that to code, correct? I see people coming All of it to go. If okay. you see something happening, you can report the address to code if somebody's. Okay. And then you don't have to confront your neighbor. The people who we hire can go and talk to them about the okay. issue. Yeah. In the last anonymously. Item, it can be done anonymously. Okay. The last item is traffic. traffic. Uh, just regarding southbound Greenfield, mm -hmm. folks making eastbound turns at eastbound Kenwood. Ken Kenwood. It's a constant problem. There's no turn lane for southbound traffic to go across the median and turn eastbound. You gotta go around and come back around and make Now which turn. street are we on? Southbound Greenfield to eastbound Kenwood. I go to Huntington Bank to bank a lot, and almost every time I go there I see people turning eastbound to come from the know. northbound lane. But why are our uh, police police at that bank? They turn to Oak Park, though. And they turn to Oak Park without making the come around, making the U-turn. So it's got to be, is it a police issue? May I? May I? Please. <laughs> you, you hit one of my other spots, which is traffic. Boy, I'll tell you. Where do I start? <laughs> totally kidding. But no, that, that is a, um, that's a county road, Assistant City Manager Yee, correct? So that is really out of our hands, but that is the way the road is set up, unfortunately or fortunately, whichever way you want to look at it. The old Michigan left there, so that is not something we can alter. Okay. 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 Would that be Oakland County Roads? They're not going to not gonna change it. I appreciate you coming in and sharing your issues. And if uh, there's something that you see, please feel free to report it to code. Um, there's a computer uh, in the code department. It's got everybody's house on it. And any issue that they've <coughs> talked to someone about is recorded on that. Um, and so if you report it, they must go check it. Okay. And um, come on right. back if you're still having trouble. Right. Thank you. have a card. I don't have a card. Joyce Bannon, 10611 Troy. We got your spelling down. You got me down. Okay. I know you missed me last month. I wasn't feeling good. But Glad I want to say thank you for the call uh, for the last snowstorm, Mr. Tungate. I'm just sorry that you have to do that. The news was telling us for four days the snow was coming in. But I do appreciate getting it. And uh, anybody who didn't pay attention to the news, shame on them. And our street was clear of cars. So, Whoa. Yes, it was. This is the first time in 50 years that I've not seen a car on my street. So, Whoa. Happy New Year, everybody. Thank you. Anybody else? Um, call to the council. Um, we are uh, celebrating Valentine's Day on the 14th. Uh, thus, the little heart that says, I love Ernie's, uh, Ernie's Market, on, um, let me think, uh, Republic, thank you, Republic, yes, got to try Ernie's Market. If you haven't been there, you're not an official Oak Parker. Um, also, the day before Valentine's Day, there's the Friends of the Library that's having a meeting, uh, 7 o'clock in the community center 
We're reviving the Friends of the Library. We'd like as many people to be helping as can possibly help. Um, if you have an issue with the library, if you'd like it improved somehow, if you go to the Southfield Library, tell us why. You know, what would we need to do to get you, to lure you back? Um, if you don't mind helping out, we, anything that we can think of doing, we can do if we can raise money with the Friends of the Library. If you like raising money or uh, if you like helping out in the library, please come to the meeting, February 13th, 7 o'clock in the Community Center. I'm looking at you. Um, Bill Leitner had a very interesting article about how hard the city manager job is in Michigan because of the way the, the laws are. They're starving the cities and these poor guys have to struggle and make things look good. It's the worst. The people who try and find city managers have the hardest time getting them to Michigan. That's why we've got him chained to his desk. Just saying. Check out Bill Leitner's article in today's Free Press. Thank you and uh, have a happy Valentine's Day. Mayor Pro Tem. Thank you everyone for coming out. Please um, be careful with the weather. I know the groundhog said that he did not see his shadow and we're supposed to have six weeks of good weather and spring will be here early. Just be cognizant of how you dress because this is pneumonia weather. Thank you everyone for coming out. Good night. Mm -hmm. uh, Council Member Weiss. Good evening, everyone. Um, to the gentleman's comment earlier, I just wanted to remind everyone as well that code enforcement, please absolutely call code enforcement if you see any issues. The number for code enforcement is 248-691-7450. Again, 691-7450, so you can put that in your speed dial okay. if you're noticing a lot of issues. Um, also, I also serve uh, traffic, some traffic concerns were brought up. I also serve on the Oak Park uh, Traffic Safety Commission. And so I just want to remind everyone that if you have any issues or concerns regarding any um, intersections that you think are unsafe or any other traffic concerns, pedestrian concerns, things of that nature, uh, please shoot me an email. We do meet um, monthly to um, uh, review issues and make recommendations. We were just kind of getting started, so we're setting the policy in place. But if you see any issues that are particularly concerning, you can shoot me an email. My email is regina.weiss at oakparkmi.gov. Again, regina.weiss at oakparkmi.gov. Happy Valentine's Day to everyone as well. And for um, any Parks and Recs fan out there, you know, the day Galentine's Day is right before February 13th. So happy Galentine's Day um, to all those females out there who are working very hard every day to make the world a better place. Thank you and have uh -huh. a great day. Council Member Edgar. Um, so Mr. Brown, I totally share your concerns. Litter is a real pet peeve, not to mention dog poop. I even chased somebody once because he doesn't pick up after his dog. And you know what? He ran away from me. <laughs> Never caught him. Um, <clears throat> so I did ask the city uh, attorney about trash management and what's required of residents. And we do have an ordinance that you have to cover your trash receptacle, which would go a long way, I think, in curbing litter. Yeah, exactly. And people just put bags at the curb, right? They get torn up, et cetera. So, um, you know, I think it's a it's a question. It's it's really about getting people in the habit of, you know, following the law. And maybe we need better enforcement. But um, I I absolutely share your concern. And you know, but I think the city does a good job overall of keeping the streets clean. But yes, we do have this issue. So. Want to say, I share your concern. On a more positive note, um, I thought Winterfest was a great success. We had about a thousand people. Um, the rec Parks and Rec Department did a great job. It was really fun, even though it was kind of warm. Uh, um, but I got a chance to uh, spend some time in the ice arena, um, and I, I really think it's a, it's just a wonderful asset for the community. 
I know that um, I understand that there's some open skating hours, but I think they come during the day. I don't. I think they're very limited, but I I really like that facility, and I hope that we can um, have further discussion about using it and maybe you know taking it back for the residents of Oak Park. Um, and uh, thirdly, uh, M Parks had a conference at uh, Suburban Collection last week, and almost every member of the Parks and Rec Commission was there. Yeah. It was really a fantastic conference. I know there, it was like a community education, you could get CEU credits for it, but they allowed the public in, and we were allowed to attend some sessions with some really interesting people, people in, in the conservation movement, um, really doing exciting things in Michigan, parks people who have some really cool ideas for age-friendly communities, for um, the way that we, we look at parks. They, they talked about new ways of looking at walkways and parks and how they're connected now. And it was really very interesting. So I'm glad that, that I had an opportunity to go as well. So everybody out there, um, thank you for tuning in. Good night. There being no further business to come before this council, this meeting is adjourned.